hello and welcome back to the coffee vanners uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, caravan sites about how we find caravan sites the way in which we look for caravan sites with the cost of caravan sites what the cost in 2023 because there's a big difference over the last few years in in site fees and how they're put together and the last but not least how you can maybe save a little bit of money just by having a look around so to, first of all let's have a look at how we actually start looking for caravan sites and we always start with a map and we we'll, we'll look at a map of UK and decide on which areas we want to go and at what time of year we want to go. So that, let's let's take for instance we decide we wanted to go for Cornwall. We'd look at what time of year. We'd have a good idea then whether we were paying low season, mid season, high season prices. And of course those prices can go from uh, well we've looked at one site. Uh, where it was £167 for a week on a fully serviced hard standing pitch all the way up to a site with pretty much the same facilities uh, where it was going to cost over £800 for the same week so there's, there's some massive differences between the two so how do we actually find those sites well we'll start with the map and find a general geographic area where we want to go and when we want to go from there we tend to get the laptop out and start looking at google maps what we will do is we'll zoom in within sort of a 10-15 mile radius of a particular site we may have chosen and look for all the other sites that are in that local vicinity and start looking do they have the, facil the facilities that we want for that time of year so if we're going in the middle of summer we're not going to be that bothered about whether we've got electric hookup because we've got the solar panel um, whereas if we're going now in, in January we want a site with hook up and we want it to be fairly sheltered from the wind and ideally maybe a little bit away from the coast as well so we're not gonna we're not gonna suffer the effects of the weather so much so that so there's different sort of aspects that we we take into account now we use a, a multitude of different websites to find the sites we want to go to and as well as the club sites there's there's lots of lots of others and what i'm going to do is rather than reel through them i'll stick them all in the description below so you can go and have a look and there will be direct links to those caravan uh, search sites so you can check them out for yourself and it and it will definitely help you in looking uh, at the same sites or close proximity sites in a geographic area to see the range of prices because they can be quite dramatic right uh, the cost of sites and this is something that that we've we've noticed is not just the general increase but the way in which sites are actually marketing themselves so some will say uh, you know site from 12 pound a night and or from 20 pound a night and that will be for your car your caravan and one person you then start adding on a second person a dog an awning a child all the rest and everything becomes an added extra and something we've noticed especially this year is more and more sites are now moving over to uh, pay as you go electricity so it's all metered so in doing that you've you've got your all these add-ons but you've got your electricity as an add-on on top and of course that's a bit of an unknown entity whilst sites don't profit from selling electricity like domestic rates the business rates that they have can vary dramatically some will buy their electricity in bulk because they're uh, farms or establish large caravan businesses so they'll have bought in bulk their prices may have been fixed from two or three years ago and some may be on brand new tariffs which are much much higher so it's very difficult to work out what that cost of electricity per kilowatt hour is going to be or what the weather conditions are going to be like when you go as to the amount of electricity you're going to use so that it's, it's just worth building into your calculations that if you've got a site which is fully serviced and the electrics included and you're going in october to one that's fully serviced electrics not included it might be slightly cheaper but you're going at the same time of year but you're on a pay-as-you-go tariff as to 
which one's actually going to be the best value for money lots of things to think about there so that, yeah and that's that's something we've we've noticed has been a a big difference is what's changed with caravan sites uh, of course all these this industry is pretty much customer led so the way caravans are laid out what's in caravans uh, are all down to what manufacturers are responding to customer demands and and caravan sites are the same uh, i think some of them have probably been forced a little bit into going down the route of metered electricity just to protect the business there is also the demands from the customer that seems to have moved towards sites having more and better facilities and that may be down to the cost of caravans if you're spending forty thousand pound on a caravan I, I wouldn't have thought you'd want to stick that on a grass field uh, where the grass hasn't been cut where the electricity pole may be 20 yards away from your caravan where your water emptying point is at the far end of the site and and and, and all the rest of it so sites are becoming more and more focused on what they provide actually at the pitch or it appears to be that way the facilities uh, like toilet blocks and shower blocks um, are more modern more metropolitan of a much higher standard they include ironing boards irons tumble dryers uh, washing machines and the like that you get on sites that maybe uh, 10 20 years ago weren't that common on on the vast majority of sites so the facilities are improving and of course those facilities have got to be paid for uh, and they wear out washing machines don't last forever neither do tumble dryers so your additional four pound five pound to pay for a washing machine cycle is not just paying for the electricity it's paying into a pot to replace that item or to repair the item when it goes when it goes wrong uh, along with that regulations have, have changed dramatically uh, especially electrical regulations uh, that have moved forward even over the last 10 years maybe four or five different alterations to electrical regulations and and the health and safety side of things all puts demands on caravan sites as to how they need to operate and the things they need to do so we're seeing a, a quite large rise in in prices uh, but a lot of that is as a result of the the need of a caravan site to do to actually keep up with the way in which customers are saying we want our sites to be it's quite interesting looking at the different sites that the gap between the 20 pound site at the bottom and the 80 pound site at the top is absolutely enormous it's more than the difference between a three and a four star hotel it's it really is chalk and cheese in in lots of places and we also find big regional disparity as well something we've noticed in booking or looking at booking sites this year is the high demand areas cornwall north wales lake district highlands of scotland where i would imagine that supply isn't as much as what the demand is for those pitches that the prices are considerably higher so maybe when choosing our sites we've we've gone no not maybe we have when choosing our sites chosen to stay away from those high demand areas uh, purely because the cost of sites are, to, are astronomical compared to other areas and um, i think that has the same has to be said with fuel prices as well you know when we're when we're towing caravans all over the country uh we i never used to think of twice about going to the pump and just putting the fuel in now i now i do actually start thinking if we're going on a longer trip what's going to be the cost of fuel in actually making that trip so whilst we're thinking about trips and traveling up and down the motorway it's time for a short break so let's take a quick break just to say thank you very much to everybody who subscribes to the channel if you don't subscribe please do consider clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell it really does help us and of course we want to say a big thank you to our sponsors for 2023 and that's cover for caravans if you're in the market for caravan insurance and you would like a quote please follow their link to cover for caravans in the description below
Right, let's get back to the video. And we're back, right. So yeah, and there's, ad there's advantages as well to the way in which sites have changed. So from the point of view of metered electric, that means if you've got a set price uh, for a site in the summer, and you decided, listen, I've got a decent leisure battery and I've got solar up top and I don't need to use metered electric. When you compared that one to somebody who, to a site where the electric's included regardless, you might turn around and say, Look, I'm, I'm going to choose the cheaper site. It's got all the facilities that I want and I'm going to be paying less because I know I'm not going to be using the electricity that on the other site I am actually paying for as part and parcel of the bundle. So there's advantages in in that alone there's also in in facilities as well i think the uh, the general uh sort of concession from myself and ali talking is that the community that are caravanning motorhome in tend to be a little bit older and as a result uh the sites that we go on we we kind of expect to have a higher quality of facility uh, purely because that just makes life that little bit easier you know if someone's got a bit of a problem with walking or a or any form of mobility problem you would hope that when you went to a site it had the facilities that would cater for for those needs and yes you're paying for those facilities but what you are doing is you're going away in with the peace of mind that you're able to enjoy the holiday as you want uh, the question is raised because we're seeing more and more uh, people commenting because of the increase in facilities and the quality of facilities uh, our sites putting more and more rules in place you can do this you can't do that you've got to do this um, you know you, are we becoming more is it becoming more regimented uh, as a as a pastime as a hobby as a lifestyle and we're not we're not sure if that's the, becoming the case on some of the more uh, sort of high-end sites that really want to provide an individual customer experience rather than a site being a community of people and a community experience um, and i suppose that will find its balance in time as as people you know certain clientele will choose certain certain types of sites i do think that uh, this this way in which sites are moving towards uh, one one car one caravan one person as a base price and then everything else as an add-on is in some respects um, putting families off caravanning because it works out because if you've got a family with three children and a caravan that's over seven meters long and you're paying for all these add-ons on top of uh, of the cost of of the pitch that everybody pays it becomes uh, a quite expensive and I've, I've even looked on one or two sites and thought well we could go for a fortnight to spain for that sort of money be time with if we'd if we took the three grandchildren and the dogs and we wanted a big awning and our caravan was over sort of seven and a half, seven meters in length would we uh, would the cost be prohibited to actually go in on a, a UK holiday? It may actually work out cheaper for, for us all to get one of these child deals and jump on a plane and go to Spain or, or go somewhere else for our holidays. So it's, it's kind of swings and roundabouts, but you know, it's, it, that's the way of the world, I think, and the way things are going as far as caravanning is concerned. The other thing that that's come up very recently is uh, that Calla have stopped producing the small gas canisters. Uh, that seems really strange to me because of the number of people that will go and will take, uh, will go in a tent. They are predominantly not going to be carrying 7, 12, 10 kilo gas bottles. They're going to be quite reliant on the small 3 and 5 kilo bottles that Calla are actually discontinuing uh, so the so the question is is that is the market changing 
are people not going in tents the same as they used to anymore are people doing more glamping or more sort of caravanning and motorhoming and has that market reduced to a point where where it's just not viable for these businesses to produce these type of bottles anymore or or as technology moved on have things gone to the point where people will buy a power pack and a and an electric cooker rather than using gas as a form of um, of cooking it's uh, it's it's all sort of going through your mind when you're looking at caravan sites that that did at one time take tents and now don't caravan sites that before covid uh, were were generally full sites uh, and you'd go there and they'd be busy and now the sites have just you know we rung a site up the other day in Scotland right on the banks of Loch Lomond and they turned around and said oh we've closed the business we had Covid and we closed the business has that had an effect on the sort of supply and demand and therefore on the prices of uh, pitches so that's our general look at caravanning uh, in 2023 booking pitches looking at facilities uh, finding places to go and uh, sort of thinking about how things have changed in caravanning and, and how we need to change or adapt uh, to suit those needs as well so if you find the video interesting please give it a like and a subscribe and do leave us a comment as to how you're finding caravanning or booking sites in 2023 and we look forward to seeing you in the next one so till next time you take care stay safe and i'll see you later Ta -da.